Hey guys, what's going on? Abby here, and today we're updating my Cryo Rack Attack build Shatter for level 57. This Cryo Rack Attack build is all about hitting as many enemies as possible with high cryo efficiency weapons and abilities to help with survivability and increase our damage against frozen targets. Also, because Rack Attack is a quick action skill with a short cooldown, we can take advantage of action skill end anointments to boost our elemental damage even further. This build is great for mobbing, but it also wrecks bosses. Plus, you can easily switch to fire racks if you need additional healing and you can change your weapon elements to suit your activity in Borderlands. The gear for this build is very flexible, but let's talk about my preferences. So for Shatterflak, I choose Cryo and Kinetic weapons because they have the highest damage on the card compared to other weapons. Some great Cryo weapons that I really enjoy, of course, the Cryo Redistributor is great, the Cryo Lob, the Nighthawken when it's in Cryo mode during the day, the Clairvoyance from the newest DLC is an amazing Cryo weapon to use with this build. You could also pick up the Kibsworth in Cryo, or the hyper focus in cryo those are all amazing choices of course you can use whatever cryo weapons you like soul render would probably be really great the cryo boom sickle is also really great it's basically up to you what you like to play with and then you're going to want to add two more elements using the anointment on action skill end gain 50% bonus elemental damage with weapons for 10 seconds. Those are going to go on your shield and your grenade. You're going to want to use two different ones. You can stack cryo, however, to do more damage and freeze the targets quicker. So I like to do that for general mobbing, but for specific activities where you're going to be fighting armor, you may want to put a corrosive on here. Radiation is always great because it's good against shields and it's neutral against flesh. So you want to switch these up depending on what activity you're doing in the game. And not only is this elemental damage anoint on your shield and grenade going to be added to your weapons for 10 seconds, but it's actually added to your racks as well. So like I said, for general gameplay, I prefer cryo and radiation on my shield and grenade since they're the most neutral element. And they're also great for mobbing because they add that crowd control and the spreading of the radiation. But if you want more information about elemental damage in Borderlands and cryo efficiency, you can check out the videos linked in the description below. Now onto class mods, you can either use the Rack Pack or the Cosmic Stalker, and both of these have their advantages. With Rack Pack, each rack is going to split into additional racks, allowing us to hit more enemies and take advantage of the weapon anointment. Enemies damaged by Rack Attack take 100% increased damage for a short time. This anointment is multiplicative, which boosts your damage even further against those targets. So if you use Rack Pack, it gives you the opportunity to use this anointment because you're going to be hitting more enemies with rack attack so you don't have to focus on one enemy at a time which can be really rough when mobbing the only time you don't want to use the rack anointment on your weapon is if it is a gun like possibly the brainstormer or a lump rocket launcher or something that's going to be hitting a lot more than just a few the few enemies that get hit by the rack attack Cosmic Stalker, on the other hand, boosts Flax skill power, which can increase your damage overall. So this class mod is really great if you just want to increase your gun damage. With this class mod, because racks won't be hitting as many targets, you're better off choosing the weapon anointment on action skill end. Weapon damage is increased by 100% for a short time. This anointment is additive, meaning that it's added to the end of the damage equation. So even though this anointment doesn't output as much damage as the rack one, it also doesn't rely on your racks finding a target. So choose the class mod that works for you based on the weapon anointments you have. Right now, both of them are very strong. However, it's a lot easier to get Get cosmic stalker class mods because they are a world drop rack pack only drops in mayhem for from trial of cunning so if you don't have the rack pack don't worry just pick up a cosmic stalker and try to find as many points into a big game as possible 
For our grenade, we're using the Hunter Seeker, which helps us maintain furious attack stacks, but you can also use the It's Piss Grenade for more damage. It gives you a 20% damage increase against the targets that it hits. It's also really great against bosses because you just have a single target. Another great option for your grenade is the Power Siphon Transfusion Tracker. You wanna look for a double generator and an Atlas manufacturer so that it'll be homing, but this will heal you for 120% of the health damage dealt and 60% of the shield damage dealt. So if you feel a little bit squishy on rack flak because it can be squishy at times, definitely give this grenade a shot. For the artifact, we're going to be using an icebreaker victory rush or an icebreaker auto idle is also great. You want to look for the perk cryo efficiency. If you can get cryo damage on there and mag size even better. You can also use the pearl of ineffable knowledge. This guy drops from the second DLC. It is a quest reward so you only get it once per play playthrough. However, it can be really strong. It is basically a consecutive hits anoint and it can add a lot of damage to your weapons. So I would use this if you are using regular racks and not going the cryo route if you don't have a lot of cryo weapons that you're using. However, Icebreaker Victory Rush works just as well if you're using a lot of cryo gear. For the pearl, I prefer magazine size and health regen. We can't get cryo efficiency on that artifact. For the shield, there are a lot of options, including the Old God, which will give you 20% more cryo damage. These come in all different elements, but I decided to go with cryo for obvious reasons. The Old God shield also comes with three perks on it versus a lot of other shields where you're only going to get two random perks. So it's a great opportunity to get some recharge, recharge delay, capacity, or something like that that's going to help your build. I'm not sure if it's possible yet because I haven't got a lot of these old gods, but if you could get triple adaptive, that would actually give you 24% more health. But you could also choose a stopgap, a recharger, transformer, or even the frozen heart shield. You just want to look for one with good perks, a large capacity, and the elemental action skill and anointment. If you feel too squishy, you could also try using the anointment on action skill and regenerate 5% max health per second for a short time on your shield. Obviously, this anointment is going to be up pretty much all the time because we're going to be throwing our racks often enough and it can help with a little bit more sustainability. So if you're having trouble with that, you could definitely switch to this. However, in the current state of the game, I don't feel like it's really that necessary. I'd rather have the elemental damage, but when Mayhem 2.0 comes out this month, sometime we haven't heard a release date yet i feel like maybe the health regen might be useful for higher levels of mayhem the health regen anointment is also great on your shield if you're using it in conjunction with the last stand auto idol if you're trying to do true takedown with this build just keep in mind that for the wotan fight you definitely want to switch to healing racks and also obviously corrosive weapons since wotan is resistant to cryo all right, so that's the gear. Let's go ahead and talk about the skill tree. It has changed a lot since our level 53 shatter flak. And as always, I'm gonna put the full skill tree up on the screen right now if you wanna pause the video. And I'm also going to link the text guide down below if you would rather save that. So for this skill tree, we're actually going to be grabbing two capstones. We're gonna be going into the green tree and we're going to be going into the orange hunter tree. Let's talk about the green tree first since this is kind of new. A lot of these skill points are gonna be flexible so you can kind of choose where to put them based on your playstyle, but I'm gonna go over the choices that I made Made and why I made them. The green tree I'd say is pretty standard. The only ones that you can move around if you like is the five points into overclocked. If you're not using full auto fire weapons and you're using a lot of semi-auto weapons where you have to click the trigger each time, then you may not want to go into overclocked. But if you're using SMGs like the redistributor and the hyperfocus like I do, then I think it's a nice way to get your damage out quicker. Also, if you're playing co-op, I think Hidden Machine could be a good one to put points into, especially if you're playing with someone that's using a pet taunt. This skill gives you 6% bonus damage against enemies that are not targeting you. So if you put five into here, that's 30% extra damage. So you could definitely move some points around to get Hidden Machine if you are playing with other people that are using taunt abilities. And then I only put one point into Rage and Recover. I feel like it's not really a very good skill. Personally, it doesn't seem like it heals that much. It's only healing a portion of your missing health and it's only over three seconds 
and it's only after you get a kill. So it just didn't seem worth it to me with the amount of damage that the enemies are doing in Mayhem 4. It just seems better to put these points into damage skills. And then onto the Orange Hunter tree. This one is fairly standard. However, I will show you guys a few flexible points that you can move around. I did decide to go back into headcount. Previously, I never used headcount with racks because it was a little buggy. It seems to be working fine now in the latest hotfix. So we're going to go ahead and put two points into there mostly just to get down to the next tree i feel like you don't really need head count especially if you have some sort of action skill cooldown it's not entirely necessary but it is nice to be able to spam those racks when you need to and then the first flexible skill is two fang you're only going to want to put five out of five into two fang if you're using single pellet weapons or unlisted projectiles if you're using things like the brainstormer the maggie the boom sickle and weapons like that it's only going to add one projectile and if there are already multiple projectiles it's not going to add a ton of damage so you'd be better off putting points into hunter's eye or you could put points into second intention for that quality of life reload speed but if you're using single pellet weapons like the redistributor and the hyperfocus, then two fang can be just a nice little boost of damage. And then down here into Grim Harvest, this is our other flexible skill. I put five out of five into this skill because I feel like for cryo racks, we really want to dish out the cryo damage wherever we can. And so getting 50% action skill damage on our racks allows us to do more cryo damage. And if we're using Rack Pack as our class mod, we're going to be hitting a lot of enemies with it. And so this just allows us to freeze enemies faster. It's not entirely necessary. And I would say if you're running the takedown, putting points into to hunter's eye is going to be more beneficial because of the armor damage versus robots but for general mobbing i feel like grim harvest is a nice skill it gives us 15 percent gun damage and 50 percent action skill damage all right guys that is shatterflack our cryo rack attack build i hope you guys enjoyed it leave a comment down below if you're using this build if you've tried it out if you've made any changes or have any questions about it rack attack is in a great place right now does a ton of damage and takes advantage of a lot of the action skill endonoids so it's super fun and flexible for mobbing and boss fighting I'm curious to see how well it stands up to Mayhem 2.0. When that comes out, I'll definitely be making an updated video for you guys. But until then, if you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for more Borderlands 3 educational and build videos. I also stream live on twitch.tv slash abbeyhour on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 8 p.m. till about 2 a.m. And we do a lot of theory crafting over there. So if you guys are interested in that sort of thing, definitely stop on by and give me your thoughts and i will see you guys in the next video bye